Hey guys, I was trying to look up the what the LEDs on these controllers meant. It took me a long time to find the information. There's, there's lots of misinformation about it for the PS3. Anyway, these are the rules here, and we're going to go over them as I'm still trying to get a, my brain wrapped around them. But number one, if you're playing, one light is on. So on this controller here, as you can see, I can... Uh, move the controller up and down and that that's controlling the PS3 now it says here if you're if you're playing well playing or in the menu system it doesn't matter you're you have the controller connected to the PlayStation and you're using it so moving it or using it to manipulate the game system whether you're in a game or in the menu system doesn't matter so this is on connected and is one LED is on now the LEDs are a reference to the system ID number that's assigned to the controller. We'll get to that in a minute. To see what it is and to see the status of the tr battery, you can just press and hold the PlayStation button and it'll pop to the stats on this controller. You, you get the option also here, you can go up and down. Gotta show you this a little easier. Go up and down and you can uh, turn off the system or turn off just the controller. The only other way you can turn off the controller is with a small pin or, or bent paper clip you can push in this hole to turn off the controller. Um, okay so again back to the LEDs. This um, LED number one represents the controller ID number number one here and it mimics the LED status right here. So it's just one is lit up to let you know that that's one. Now, let, and unfortunately, I don't have uh, multiple dual shock controllers here right now. I've had them in the past, but I don't have them with me right now. But uh, I do have these other controllers, the motion controllers. And unfortunately, they don't have, um, they just have a single LED here. And the only way you can see a simulated set of four LEDs like these have is you hold down the PlayStation button. Oh, first, oh, first I have to get out of the, the menu the screen for this controller by selecting back here. So I hit back, just get back to the menu system. Now I can grab another controller, hold down the PlayStation button, and now it's going to show you its status. Now look at this. This is controller ID number seven. Okay, why are there two LEDs lit up here? Well, three plus four is seven. So this is a representation of that number, three and four. Okay, let's, uh, get, let's go here and hit back on this controller. Okay, the back right there. Back to the mini system, I'll grab another controller here. I'll hit the uh, PlayStation button on it. Okay, notice this one is number six. System ID six is assigned to this controller and four plus two is six. So that's what's going on here. There's the battery level. So it's a uh, fully charged. Notice it's steady. The, L the single LED is steady. to let you know it's already charged up and the same was true on this one I believe. Let me get back here. Hit back, go back to this controller, hold down the button, and it was it's fully charged. Okay, and I have the charge cable connected. This one I had just unplugged it, so it's still fully charged, even though it's not charging. Okay, if if a controller is charging, this battery symbol will be kind of rotating those L, those segments to let you know it's working on it. Okay, so let's um, now plug this in. Oh, okay, so that was number one. If you're playing, and then one light will be on. Or in in the cases of these controllers, once you go beyond four controllers, your controllers get the double LEDs going to indicate the actual number. So, uh, so in this case, if this was a regular dual shock controller with four LEDs on it, then you would see LED three and four lit up to let you know it's um, it's your plane and the LEDs are on indicating the ID number of the controller. Okay, so now number two, if you're playing and charging, in other words, plugged in, 
uh, it'll they'll, the LEDs, whichever number of the system ID that's assigned to it, those LEDs will blink to let you know it's charging. So let's do that in this case. So in this controller here, let's go ahead and uh, plug it in. And now you'll see it starts to blink. Okay, that means it's charging. Now let's say I had another controller here and it was controller six you would see LEDs two and four that they would have been solid red each number two and four and then when I plugged it in two and four would be blinking to let you know it's charging and it's controller number six okay so let's um go back to here I gotta get out of that screen go back to this guy hold down the PS button and we can see here there it is. So this is back to controller one. That's that was one on here. One is blinking. One is blinking. And there's that graphic showing you it's charging. Okay, as soon as it the battery gets fully charged, it'll just go steady there and it'll the LED will become steady as well. Okay, a little side step here. Uh, this cable is going into the PlayStation USB port. But there's no difference in me unplugging this and going over to like a uh, cell phone charger or USB charger standalone. I can just plug it right in here. Okay. And it will, oh, well now it's fully charged. <laughs> anyway, because um, I was close to the, I was like probably over 90% charged. But um, anyway, let me go to the, hit the PS button on that and now it's uh, fully charged anyway just to let you know you can use cell phone chargers to charge these guys and it's no different than plugging it into the USB ports on the PlayStation itself uh, the only time that you would have to plug a controller into the PlayStation is if the, the controller can't find the PlayStation and like if I were to take this controller to another PlayStation, like you take this over to a friend's house who has a, a, a single controller and you want to join him in a dual game, you'd have to connect your controller to his game console by plugging it into the one of the front USB ports on his uh, console in order for them to sync up once. Once it's synced up to that con game console, then you can unplug it. Okay, so uh, let's go. Let's unplug this again. So if it's unplugged, of course, you know you can. The only reason you're plugging this into the PlayStation is for charging, or plugging it into a cell phone charger is for charging. Playing the game has there's no connection through the cable to playing games. The cable exists for the sole purpose of charging the battery, and if you're first initializing the controller to the PlayStation, it has to be plugged in via the cable once to get that Wi-Fi connectivity set up, the Bluetooth connectivity set up. Okay, so the other uh, scenarios is if the controller is off and not charging, no lights are on, that makes sense, it's off and it's not plugged in. But if it's off and it's charging, then the, the all four lights will blink. That's that's kind of interesting, and I've seen that in other people's videos. I can't demonstrate it here right now because my controller is fully charged, and if the controller is dying while playing, one light will blink. Now remember, this is this sentence here is saying one light, but the ID combination of LEDs will blink rapidly to let you know it's about to die. That usually I've found that to be 10 or 15 minutes of life left in the battery, and and then it'll completely die. So you have a little bit of time. Okay, so in quick review, so yeah, come to this screen, hold down the PS button for about two, three seconds. This menu will pop up. If you go to another controller, you got to remember to hit back. Hit the, the O there get, to get back out of there. Let's see, it's on this controller. Before you can go to your next controller, then you can hit the PS button. Check out the current status. And... Um, 
if you unpl if you unplug these, they will automatically go to sleep after some timeout. I'm thinking it's somewhere between five and ten minutes. I think they'll auto turn off if they're just if they sense that they're not being used. But you can go ahead and just go grab here, hold the trigger down, go down to turn off the controller, and there the LED went off. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, Maybe that, those few tidbits will help you manage your controllers better. Thanks for watching.